So you probably followed the advice, follow your heart. And when it comes to making important decisions in life, you sometimes don't know. Should I make the decision with my mind? Should I make it with my heart? Should I ask my friends? Should I ask my family? And if you look behind me, there's a poster of Steve Jobs, and he was a big proponent of the concept of follow your heart and follow your intuition. But what does that even mean? And how can you actually use that in a very practical sense? Now, as you know, I am an engineer. I'm an electrical engineering PhD student. So everything in my life is really grounded in reality and practicality and physics. So very often, the idea of following your feelings and following your heart somebody who's very physics based and engineering based may seem a bit spooky and you would assume that like following your mind and your thoughts alone and logic should lead you to make the most optimal decisions but i think the big problem in here is that most people view intuition and like thinking as two separate things but in my opinion these two things actually feed off of each other like in your brain you have regions that are only responsible for only thinking and cognitive function and you have other regions that are responsible for emotion and feelings but these things do communicate with each other they're not entirely separate so i'm going to give you a few examples of the decision I have made and how I have made them and I think they are the right decisions how they involved both my thinking brain and my intuition slash feelings when I made those decisions and towards the end of the video I think you'll understand how to make decisions and when to listen to your intuition and when not to The first example is when I got the first offer for my first NASA internship. And I remember at the time, the way NASA, the NASA website had it is you could apply to multiple internships at different multiple centers. And then there would be like some type of matchmaking process and you would essentially get picked. However, if you were to decline that internship, there is a chance that another center could pick you up. And I remember their first internship offer I got was from the NASA Wallops flight facility, which I believe is somewhere in either Virginia or Maryland. And I think it was like some type of networking projects that I just was not interested in. However, it was still a freaking NASA internship and I had not had such thing before such thing was like a dream it would be crazy to turn something like that down so i had two options i could either accept it and go to the wallops flight facility or i could decline it and take a big risk and just assume that and hope that some other centers such as kennedy or johnson which are the ones where i wanted to work would reach out so it was definitely a big risk so logically it seemed like wallops would be a safe choice but i knew that somewhere like kennedy or johnson would be way more exciting i'd get to actually work on things i'm interested in so even though one was a guaranteed nasa internship the other one was a lot riskier but it would have been a lot more more exciting and that was one situation where my mind was leaning more towards wallops and saying oh well maybe this is safe but then my heart i could feel a strong feeling where it's like no man let's go to kennedy let's go to johnson i really believe this is gonna work out and sure enough i did decline the wallops offer and i waited a few days or a few weeks i don't remember and these were very stressful few days and few weeks and guess what later on i did get an offer from the kennedy space center and i went there and it was the best experience of my whole life in my entire engineering career i will say that like the time i spent at the kennedy space center was amazing and it was thanks to me following my heart when, with that decision because I just knew that I had the feeling, I had faith that it would work out. So to summarize, decision one, because the feeling slash intuition was so strong, it was a no brainer. Second decision where I had this mind and heart dichotomy is when I was deciding on going for a PhD. I had just gotten accepted to the PhD program at my university and I was asking around a bunch of people who were in the PhD program. At the time, I remember I was calling, I called a graduate student to ask him for advice and I was saying, hey man, what do you think? This is my skill set. This is what I want. This is what not. And we ended up having a 45 minute conversation about the PhD. And it's funny enough, previous to the phone call, my intuition was leaning more towards maybe not doing the PhD and maybe trying to see something else. But after the phone call, I had with that graduate student, he helped me clarify so many things and helped me realize so many things that I did not know about the PhD program and some of the benefits that I would have. So the facts changed and the knowledge changed in my mind. And as a result of changing my mind, I noticed my intuition slash feelings changed. Where now suddenly I actually felt like it felt more right to do the PhD. And that's because the facts had changed and what I knew was changed. And that's when I realized that your intuition is not just this random thing that comes out of nowhere completely separate from your mind. It was feeding off of what I already knew. And after I had gathered a lot lot of information and made like a pros and cons list in my head my intuition had the final call where it was like hey man you know what let's just go for it i think this is the right thing so the takeaway from decision two i made is that your intuition or your feeling will very often be based on the knowledge and the facts that you gather about the decision that you want to make so you want to be absolutely clear about what knowledge is out there how to gather it how to lay it out and how to be so clear-minded that you can make the decision so easily and so effortlessly third decision i want to share with you is when i decided to go study abroad in spain 
I wanted to go study in Spain for six months, but it would have been very costly. It would have cost me $15,000 and I did not have that money. And to me, the idea of living in Spain and working there and studying there and meeting people just sounded so exciting. So my feelings were already like, heck yes, let's do this. However, my mind was like, hold on a second, dude, this is $15,000 in only six months and you don't even have that money. And the only way to do this is we'd have to take out a loan to do that. And everybody told me, man, don't do that. Like, what are you doing? Like, this is like a crazy amount of money. Like, you're just going to go for six months to Spain. Like, what's the point? However, I really value that experience. And I really knew in my heart that I wanted to go experience other cultures, live in another place. And I knew that like in my mind, logically, that it would be an investment it would not be an expense because I would basically take myself out, move to another country and change all the variables around me. And basically the only thing that's left is me with new environment. And that would help me develop self-awareness. And I thought of it as I'm paying $15,000 to develop more self-awareness, which is probably going to help me make more money down the line. So my feelings were pretty strong on that like it sounded exciting and my mind shifted from doubt to actually thinking more like an investor and thinking we have to do this thing no matter what we have to do this thing and I did go to Spain that was probably best six months of my entire college career and thanks to those six months in Spain I developed so much self-awareness I learned so much about myself and that allowed me to just go on a crazy adventure after that the lesson I want you to get from this video is when you're making decisions, your intuition is very important. Steve Jobs is right. You have to follow your heart and you have to follow your intuition. But very often what your intuition or heart will decide will often be based on the facts and beliefs and the worldview that you have. So you have to put the effort to make sure you get the most accurate facts possible and you have to get the best advice you can from the people who already have what you want. For example, when I was deciding on graduate school, I didn't go ask my friends. I went and I asked a graduate student who's already in the program. You ideally you want to spend a lot of time asking advice from the people who are already doing the thing that you're trying to do. And this is why I made this YouTube channel and this is why I'm very comfortable giving advice because I've been into an engineering undergraduate program. I've been in a master's program. I've been in a PhD program. I've done multiple internships. I've studied abroad. I've done research. I've experienced the whole thing. So I'm not just random guy on the internet telling you what to do with your life. I'm somebody who has experienced all these things. And based on what I'm able to tell you, I'm confident that it should be able to help you because it's basically coming from somebody who has lived the life and who has experienced the thing that you're trying to experience. Now, obviously I want you to critically think and I want you to do your own research and figure out what works for you. But again, the reason I make those videos is because I really wished I had a reliable source of knowledge and information that would basically give me all these action items and lists and things to do based on trying to figure it out on my own. So I really hope that you do get value from these videos, which by the way, if you're one of my subscribers or if you're one of the people that watch these videos regularly, you guys are absolutely awesome. And I love your comments. And I love your interactions. And just the fact that you're spending time watching these videos and listening to me, that really means a lot. I really do appreciate that. That alone makes me feel very grateful and and that alone makes me want to go out there, experience more things, try more things, learn more things so I can come back and teach it to you guys and hopefully inspire you to do the same. Now, I do talk a bit more in detail about the decision I made to make a PhD and how I was weighing the pros and cons and how I followed my intuition. And the video should be somewhere over here. So if you've not watched this one already, I highly encourage you to watch it, not for the sake of learning about the PhD, but just to understand what it's like to make decisions and what goes on in my mind when I make decisions. With that, I'll see you over there. Peace, love.